Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at some hardware and some Linux software to run on said hardware. Um, we're going to build something which I've uh, named here a plasma box and you'll see why as we go through the video. Um, now there's a lot of talk around on uh, on YouTube and in the tech press at the moment, um, you know there's some of the high end hardware that's around from AMD in particular at the moment um, with the uh, Threadripper chips and um, the new Vega graphics cards, um, um, massively powerful um, chips and devices certainly, um, and they certainly have their use. But um, for this video, we're going to catapult ourselves right to the very opposite end of the spectrum, and we're going to look at some very low-powered uh, hardware and some lightweight software that runs absolutely fantastically on that. Um, and I called it the plasma box because we are going to see here the marriage of a small mini PC, um, an Intel Nook style PC, but this um, this particular one um, is uh, is introduced by a different company. This is from B-Link, uh, a Chinese company that um, nevertheless uses all the same uh, chipset uh, and circuitry that you would find in an Intel Nook, but in a in a different package. And we're going to marry that up with uh, KDE Plasma the very latest Plasma 5.14.2, I believe, um, which we've now got uh, running courtesy of Kubuntu and the Kubuntu backports. So let's uh, let's get into this and take a look at what we've got. So as I say, it's a company called B-Link, and the machine that we've got here is the Gemini X55 Ultimate. Now, Gemini is uh, the name... Uh, originates from the name of the chipset. It's the Gemini Lake chipset from Intel. And as you can see here, this is running the Gemini Lake Pentium Silver processor J5005 with Intel 605 graphics. Now this is basically a development of the older Atom processors, which have been around for a few years now. Um, very early on in 2018, I think January 2018, uh, these this particular chipset um, hit the market. Um, now most of these are quad core, um, but some of them go under the Celeron brand, and those are lower clocked um, and have um, a slightly less good graphics um, graphics performance. Um, the Pentium Silver, as we've got in this particular machine here, um, has a higher performing graphics uh, graphics section, um, has more execution units. Um, and it's clocked higher. The base clock on this is 1.5 gigahertz, as opposed to, I think it's one, in some of the um, some of the slightly cheaper chips, and also the laptop variants, which are also clocked lower. So this is the X series uh, from B-Link. Um, there are three models in this series. Um, there's your standard dual-core Celeron version. There is a quad-core Celeron, and then there's this Ultimate, which also has. Um, 128 gigabyte M SATA drive and also 8 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 RAM uh, built into this particular unit. Um, so as I say, the, the Intel chip is interesting because the laptop versions, and some of you who've seen the earlier videos will have seen me um, doing a, a small piece on the uh, on the GeoBook, um, which also uses this processor, but it uses the J5000 version, which is the laptop version, clock slightly lower at 1 gigahertz and that has a 6 watt um, TDP power rating. Um, this one they open the clock up slightly and as I say they improve the graphics and on this one we go to a whopping 10 watts um, maximum power. Now I say maximum you can exceed that and in fact um, as we'll see when we go to look at the BIOS later you can take off the B-Link imposed cap within the BIOS and you can run it at higher wattage potential if you wish. Obviously, that means it runs hotter. The fans will run more often, um, and you potentially, if you don't quite know what you're doing with that, could risk the, the uh, performance of your machine. But we'll come on to that a bit later. But basically, um, so this is slightly different to the laptop version, and the claim here from Intel is that this is perfectly up to running, as you can see at the bottom there, your kind of daily, daily office use uh, programs um, such as the Microsoft Office Suite, etc. And even uh, things like Photoshop, and that's not uh, an idle claim. Um, we will look at some, not Photoshop, but we'll certainly look at how this copes with video editing at 1080p a bit later on in the video. So that's just a basic outline of the chip. 
machine itself um, you can see here the specs are on the right so we've already covered the chip but um, uh, interesting this one this particular model comes with a 128 gigabyte M SATA um, mini drive built in um, now that's removable it's slotted you can upgrade it to your heart's content um, but it actually is a nicely performing drive um, I haven't benchmarked it but certainly others out there have done videos on this and it performs not quite as good but within a hair's breadth of the things you'd get from for example um, Western Digital or or Samsung so although it's a cheaper Japanese, uh, Japanese um, uh, Chinese drive um, the performance um, is actually very very good indeed um, and especially as this model also comes with eight gigabytes as I mentioned earlier of DDR4 RAM now many of these PCs certainly the slightly older ones um, usually come with four and in many cases only come with two and often that would be DDR3 <clears throat> so, so here we've got the faster RAM and plenty of it for a Linux um, installation um, four is about the minimum really you want these days with the Linux distribution probably Windows too um, eight I would argue is ample unless you intend to do some really heavy lifting on this machine and in which case I wouldn't recommend it anyway because it's not suited for that purpose but eight is absolutely ample for the intended use for this type of machine um, you have dual band wireless so you have wireless AC now thankfully this is an Intel wireless adapter so very Linux friendly um, Linux uh, in the past certainly has had a problem with some wireless drivers um, not Intel Intel always works pretty flawlessly and thankfully that's what we've got here as well um, you've got Bluetooth 4 so your latest headphones microphones etc should work absolutely fine on this um, I've been using this with a very nifty little Microsoft surface mouse um, which is Bluetooth and that works fine and also an Orky digital uh, Bluetooth speaker system and again that's been working absolutely fine uh, with no issues so so that's all all very good so moving on to the, um, the side and the rear we can see um, on the front you've got two USB three ports you've got a headphone combined headphone microphone jack and obviously the power button does light up blue well that's red in the picture um, on the back you've got another two USB 3's um, gigabyte LAN which is very very useful um, I prefer that over wireless wherever possible um, two HDMI ports and your 12 volts DC input jack now the sides you have vents to take in airflow and you also have um, on the right hand side a micro SD card slot which is also um, very useful for um, downloading photos and etc from your your camera or your or your Android phone uh, so again very very useful indeed um, I should say that the HDMI ports on this um, do support 4k and they support 4k at 60 Hertz so they are version 2 ports which again is very good and the chipset in this although low-end will drive two monitors at 4k 60 Hertz with no problem whatsoever So in terms of size, um, a very small indeed. It's 115 by 143, and it's only, I think, uh, 4.5 or sorry, 43 millimeters high. Um, so very small indeed. You can tuck this at the back of your monitor. It comes with a VESA mount if you wish, um, or just tuck it on a shelf, and you'll you'll barely know it's there. So very very small um, and metal construction. Um, other than the kind of glossy little plastic flap you can see on the top with the logo the sides um, and the bottom and the internal dividing chassis are all made from pretty sturdy metal which also helps with the uh, with the cooling so very useful to have now one thing this does offer over the Intel versions is the ability to insert a standard 2.5 inch drive inside the machine so either in place of or in addition to your M SATA drive you can put in a 2.5 inch um, spinning drive or a 2.5 SSD and it bolts to the bottom plate as you can see there in the usual way using the four screws on the drive um, this does come with the cable so you can attach this to the internal board um, I think on the next slide there yes indeed we can see that so that's a picture of the inside and there on the left you can see the M SATA 
and there on the right you can see how you would mount the internal drive with its um, with its SATA cable onto the motherboard. Quite neatly laid out inside. Um, looks well made. I've um, I've taken the bottom off on this just to have a look, and um, so no no complaints. So all seems fine and dandy. Now this is actively cooled. Some of these uh, devices, particularly with this chipset, when it's used in laptops, you will find that uh, they uh, often use passive cooling. Um, this one, because it uses the um, the desktop uh, style chip, does have some active cooling, um, and it sucks air in from the sides. You can see there, um, passes it across a small copper heatsink internally, and then blows it out of the back of the unit. It does work very well. Um, in most use, just general general web browsing, word processing, etc., you will not hear the fan at all. Um, I don't even know if it actually spins at that low workload. Um, the next setting you can hear, but it's a very, very quiet whisper. You need to put your head right against the unit. And that will typically come on when you're watching uh, watching video, uh, 1080p video or lower. Um, uh, and then there's one further setting, which is the high setting. And you can expect to hear that kick in if you're doing video editing, perhaps watching a 4K full screen uh, video. Now you can certainly hear that, but it's just basically a hiss from the unit. Um, there's no, no grumble, no rumble, no rattles. Uh, so if you've got the thing mounted behind your monitor again it's not disturbing at all and a lot quieter than certainly a tower PC with um, with fans uh, fitted is going to be so again it's uh, it's good if you um, if you want something that's quiet certainly if you use this as a media center PC and you had it on the opposite side of your room perhaps in a cabinet um, you won't hear it no matter what uh, what fan setting uh, is in use now on the top there you can see we have the wireless antennas. As I said this is dual band so on the left you have the uh, one antenna on the right you have the other and they are kind of like etched PCB type antennas sitting just below the plastic hood and it's plastic for a reason because obviously you don't want to encase, encase wireless antennas in an all metal construction. Hope you're listening Apple. Okay. Now, this is just reminding us that we have 8 gigabytes of lovely DDR4 RAM, which is useful. Only on the top model, by the way, the other two don't have that. They have four. Um, so I would opt for the X55 over the X45 if I were you. Um, there's about £50 difference between the two. Uh, I should mention this This costs, you can buy this on Amazon for about £200 uh, UK pounds. So what would that be? Probably about 230 to 40 US dollars. So very inexpensive, in my opinion, for the hardware that you get. And of course you can mount this. It comes with a, a VESA mount bracket within the box. And uh, you can see here that it's designed either for wall mounting, you can see the bracket on the left, or indeed you can mount it on your monitor. And I've done that here. On this next slide here you can see this is my... Uh, is my Samsung uh, monitor. It's a curved monitor, um, very nice monitor, 24 inch. And on the back there, you can see the B-Link just mounted with its supplied bracket. So very untidy, out of the way, and you don't even know you've got a PC in operation. So that's the end of the introduction. Now what we'll do is we'll boot the machine up. We'll have a quick look at the BIOS, um, and then we'll go through and look at the performance on the desktop. So we'll see you again in a moment. Okay, this is the um, this is the BIOS screen that you're greeted with uh, when you hold the uh, escape key um, on this particular machine. Now, thankfully for us Linux users, this is uh, entirely unlocked. So, thankfully the manufacturers have not locked down the BIOS, so you have access to the uh, all settings, including some of the very granular settings. Um, for example, things like setting the power limits for your CPU. Um, uh, the boot order of various components and you can you can go in and uh, tweak this to your heart's consent or break it to your heart's consent so do be very careful some of these settings um don't need to be meddled with but it's there if you want it so here we are booting into the desktop and here we are with kde plasma kubuntu and it's going to ask us for our password And we see the little plasma box logo. And there we are on 
the desktop. Now, um, I haven't let uh, KDE Plasma off the hook. I've left all the whizbang effects enabled. Just to tax this wee little processor for you. But before we do any of that, um, let's just go into settings. If I can remember where the settings are, system monitor. And I just want to show you something. If you take a look just down here at the bottom, look at the memory usage, 322 meg. Yes, 322 meg, not four, not five. And CPU usage sitting now at zero on this tiny little low end PC. It's not using any CPU sufficient to even notify the monitor that it's working. So incredibly low RAM usage and very low resource usage. Now I thought I'd just show that to start with because um, some of you might have thought, well, this is a lightweight PC. Why have you put uh, KDE Plasma on? Well, precisely because Plasma in its current form is a very lightweight desktop. Um, in my opinion, it's now even lighter than things like XFCE. Um, there's there's a there's nothing really in it between LXQT and Plasma these days in terms of how light they are, and in my opinion, if you're going to use um, a QT based uh, desktop, you may as well go with Plasma over the somewhat hobbled um, LXQT. Uh, so that's what I've chosen to install. Now you will notice there is no menu in the bottom because I've removed that. Um, anyone who's seen my previous videos knows that I'm an open box user normally. And so I'm not used to having menus in my taskbars. Uh, I'm used to right clicking. And indeed, we've got the right click menu enabled here on KDE. Here we go. And so we can come along here and we can just pull up our, our items as we wish there. And we've got the blur effect enabled here as well, as you can see, and the background transparency. Now, just to walk you around the desktop, I have got wobbly windows enabled on this. Um, and as I say, I haven't turned off all the fancy compositing effects. I've turned um, the speed up slightly on that because I don't like it um, to be too slow. But let's just, for example, open the console. You see how quickly that opened. Here we go. We've got the wobbly windows effect. You'll see the transparency working perfectly. And when I let this go, you'll see the background blur is working immediately as well in the background. So, and that's just um, that's just the, a themed console terminal window. But as I close that, you'll see the nice fade-off effect there. Uh, what else have we got down here? Um, our farm manager. This is the glorious Dolphin farm manager. And again, you can see absolutely perfect. No screen tearing. All the effects working absolutely perfectly. Uh, what else have we got here? Chromium, our web browser. Let's just load that. There we are. Very quick loading of Chromium. Um, now let's really tax it and open, say, YouTube. And you see how quick this loads and all these tiles come up, bang. So pretty much instant there. And we can scroll along here. Let's say I'm using a, a fancy little um, Microsoft um, Arc mouse here, which has got these nice um, kind of inertia-driven scrolling effects on it. All working fine at the box, by the way. All the drivers are there in the latest Linux kernel for that. So um, thank you. Mr. Torvalds for um, keeping us all updated there. Um, now let's um, let's pop a nice little 4K video on there for you. So who makes 4K videos? Linus Tech Tips makes 4K videos, doesn't he? So let's just hop in, and um, this is a 4K. So let's just hop in and bring that up. And there we go, bang straight up. That's in 1080. Let's switch it to 4K. And there we go, 4K. Full screen, no problem. 4K. There we go, handling that absolutely fine and no issues whatsoever. So, I don't recommend you, you run 4K by the way, and you can. All I'm doing is showing you that you can do that. Um, uh, I wouldn't bother running 4K unless you absolutely need to or you've got an enormous high res monitor. Um, so let's dive in and choose something a little, a little more standard. There's a 
one of um, one of Carmine's videos, Total OS Today. We'll take a look at that, one of his streams. And now if I minimize this, you will see it minimizes and we can drag that around with a live video playing happily in the window and it's working absolutely perfectly. We can of course use our tiling, call tiles, bottom, top, or side. We can open something else. We can open, for example, Digicam, which is our photo management program. And that's now loading up. And you can see the slides I was uh, using earlier for the presentation. And again, we'll drag that over to the side there. And there we go, multitasking with our two, with our two applications there running side by side. No issues whatsoever. Video playing, smooth scrolling, and uh, all fine and dandy. Now, uh, what else have we got down here? Spotify, of course, music player, bang, straight up. This is not the ghastly snap. This is the proper bona fide deb file, which I recommend you install if you possibly can. Um, and again, works absolutely perfectly. So let's just um, let's select something and let's play. working very well i don't know if you can hear that because i don't know if i've enabled sound on the capture card but if you can great if you can't take my word for it it does play and um we'll we'll close that down uh i've got our steam installed on here um we've got our discover software center you know discover has come on in leaps and bounds works absolutely fantastically now you'll be surprised to hear um, i've used it to, to do all of the updates from the kubuntu backports on the system and it's worked flawlessly um, and I've used it to install all of the software. Um, now let's try it and um, hopefully this doesn't make a fool out of me. Let's install a browser. Let's install the Falcon browser, for example. Falcon is the uh, cute based browser that KDE have taken under their wing. And there we go. Click install and off she goes. Asking for our password for authentication, of course. Quite right. Downloading installing 70 percent there 90 and we're in okay no crashes no stutters you'll notice that the blue uh, the blue progress bar here matched the timeline progress down here which is something it never used to do unfortunately or at least not very reliably but they seem to have sorted that bug um, it's nice to see as well that they've kind of reduced the size of some of these items in the uh, in the um, in the display here so for example now if we click on this and um, what should we search for let's go back there we go so these used to be absolutely enormous you'd get about three of these within the window but thankfully they've done a bit of restyling on this and you now get um, a much better looking uh, display it looks very nice of course this is the um, this is a the dark theme standard plasma uh, dark theme um, breeze dark enabled um, I'm not using the breeze icon set this is using um, what is it using I've forgotten papyrus that's it papyrus um, icons with breeze actions which is um, a slightly modified set especially for the plasma desktop works extremely well it retains down here in the right hand side all of the, the kind of the slightly um, uh, unique to KDE black and white um, icons in your taskbar but it does include all the kind of little coloured icons that you get or the flat icons you get in the standard papyrus set so all very good indeed so plasma is working really really well with the discover center we've got telegram here and that works very well you see how quickly that loads um, we can drop into the timelines on these all loads really fast all scrolls really really well we can jump down to the bottom absolutely fantastic so i hope you can see from just that very quick look around the desktop that in terms of its overall performance it's um it's absolutely fine um and what we'll do next is we'll just dip into caden live um we'll pop a five minute also 1080p video excerpt in there and we'll render it and we'll render it using all four cores and we'll see what this little thing can do when it's rendering 1080p 
the video. So we'll pop back in a moment when we've got that file selected and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. We will now uh, launch uh, Caden Live, and of course, thanks to the uh, the fantastic K Runner built into the Plasma desktop, we don't need menus, we don't need shortcut keys. We just start typing. So Caden will bring us at the top. The first entry is, of course, Caden Live, and we launch. And there we are. This is our Caden Live. So let's full screen that. And uh, let's um, let's just open a clip. Um, I've got a five-minute clip here, which um, we can we can import into the timeline. So if I open recent test document, which is this one, uh, I just made a, a five-minute clip of um, moving the things around on the desktop, opening YouTube, etc., playing a video, and just recorded that to 1080p using simple screen recorder and all we're going to do is drop it into the timeline as we've got here and then we'll um, we'll render that and just to see how this thing copes at uh, a video rendering so um let's just move this down to video one let's just move that back and um i'll play an excerpt here you can see it's just uh it's just moving the uh some things around the desktop and i just selected some video to play um of course we can uh, so we can jump ahead and you'll see as we do that the video moves accordingly and of course we can scrub as well here Back and forth. So let's uh, let's pause that, and um, let's see how we get on when we render. So let's click on render. We'll um, we'll do MP4 H two six four. The Gemini Lake uh, chipset, by the way, does have hardware decoding for most of the standard uh, formats, including two six four and two six five. So it has built into the Intel chip the ability to hardware decode and encode these um, these formats, which is very useful and responsible for some of the um, the gains in video performance that we've seen um, recently in these in, in these chips. So what we'll do is we'll go down here. We'll go to more options because I'll do this at the highest quality. We'll take that up to the highest we can, and in here you can see encoder speed and threads. Now. I'm going to change that. We've got four threads here, or four, four cores, I should say, um, and we'll put that to the max. Now, you can do that. The system will still work if you set your um, your video uh, program to use for four of your four cores. Um, you will find, however, that everything else is very sluggish. It is usable, but you can, and, and oh, but I would suggest that you don't give it um, four cores if you intend to do something else while you're um, in. Um, while you're uh, rendering your videos, perhaps give it two and retain two for something else. If you're not bothered and you just want the fastest um, render time, then give it all four cores um, and it will still work fine. The, the system, the, the background software is intelligent enough to know that you still need something in reserve for your uh, your system tray functions and general operation. So there we go. So we'll click on um, render to file. And we'll give it a name first of all, shall we? It's un untitled at the moment. So let's call this um, let's call this test two, and we'll hit render. Let's say I'm waiting. It's doing a calculation. Now it says it's going to take three minutes and eighteen seconds. Um, it probably won't. I think it will take a little bit longer than that. Um, I'm not going to sit here and make you wait. So what we'll do is we'll pause the video and we'll come back shortly, and we'll see how long this took to render. So back in a jiffy. And there we go. Well, that was faster than I thought. Three minutes and 25 seconds to render a five minute 1080p 30fps video. That's pretty damn good given the class of processor we're using here. Um, it's not much different to the third gen quad core 8 thread i7 that I have in the desktop machine. Um, that is a bit faster and 
certainly um, it's faster if you push up the frame rate but that's pretty good going that is very good going certainly usable you could certainly use this if you um not if you're a prol prolific youtuber but certainly if you do the odd bit of video editing this is going to cause you no issue whatsoever um also i found that um just doing some photo editing as well you may have to wait a second or so for effects to take effect rather than kind of instant or milliseconds as you might get on a high-end processor but um if you can't wait a second for something then you have something seriously wrong with your expectations in life in my opinion um so there we are um i am absolutely bowled over by how well this thing works um we'll, we'll close that out and uh no we don't want to save and um and what we'll do next is we'll try some some games now i wouldn't claim this to be uh good enough for uh the latest games to run satisfactorily um older games certainly will if you're going back maybe three or four years then most of those are going to play absolutely fine on this um on this integrated graphics as it has improved markedly on the on older generations but um, certainly things like uh, Super Tax Cart, uh, the Linux game, will run absolutely fine. Um, I put Dota 2 on this as well, and that actually runs ran surprisingly well at 1080p. You'll see a little tiny clip of that. Um, I'm not a gamer, so um, I don't understand that game, so I just did a very small clip of it. Um, and uh, finally, I did uh, ETS uh, Truck Simulator. Again, I left it at standard settings at 1080p, which is a blooming stretch for this processor. But uh, it actually coped. Not quite the prettiest in the world uh, in terms of the output, but it's certainly usable, and you could certainly tweak it. So let's go and uh, let's go and load those uh, clips up, and I'll uh, and I'll show you what it does when you put some uh, some games through it. This is just some uh, some footage of Dota 2 with um, some weird and wacky creatures that I, uh, I loaded up. I didn't actually get into playing the game, but you can see some of the graphics effects on these, which is um, pretty decent, considering, again, the kind of low-end, low-power chip that we've got in use here. It seems to, um, seems to work pretty well. Fire-breathing dragon thing here. Um, lots of weird and wonderful monsters in this uh, in this particular game um, it seems to cope pretty well with the lighting and all of the all of the effects on those on those characters okay now some super tax cart and off he goes expect it to run this and of course it does run it absolutely fine it's a native linux program but um frame rate can suffer with this on some low-end machines but um not so here it seems to be absolutely steaming along um it's a, it's a it's a great racer game if you're into this kind of thing um very decent graphics um, it looks very good indeed I don't drive in real life, as you can probably guess by this, and also the um, the uh, Euro Truck examples I often put up when I'm routinely crashing and blasting into things. Um, I'm not doing that intentionally, so I can't drive, basically, um, in real life or in games. Um, but this is running very nicely, as you can as you can see. You know, the, te the test. The real test is coming up in a moment, of course, when we move on to, um, on to ETS. I love this, uh, this front headlight view. Makes me laugh. It's about rabbit caught in the headlights. <laughs> Oops, I told you I was no good. Crash, crash. here we are on ETS now this is a, a bit of a test for this because it's running at 1080p and I've left it at standard settings now you could go in and perhaps render this uh, in the background at 720 um, and pull some of the settings down and you'd get uh, higher frame rates but it actually manages reasonably well I tried this on some some laptops recently and it absolutely um, caved it was awful um, some of the older laptops has kind of 
second, third, fourth gen Intel machines, the um, the versions of uh, of the graphics chip on there don't even don't even allow some of the effects. So what you find is you've got no trees in pictures, and um, you're left with a road and no lighting, for example. Um, but at least in this, all the uh, all of the uh, game functions do work, which is of course very useful. But um, yeah, this trundles along reasonably nicely as I say not the prettiest but it works and uh, works at 1080p so I'll let this run for a while and uh, and you can see what happens apologies for the noise in the background by the way I've got screaming bloody kids next door from the neighbours at one end and torrential downpours of rain and hail coming in through the windows at the other end so um, this mic is pretty good at cutting out background noise, but you might hear you might hear something in the background. So apologies if you if you do. And bang, straight into the barrier. That's enough of that. So that seems like a good enough place to end the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it's kind of installed a bit of faith in you that these these um, very low power uh, chip sets are capable of some decent results. Um, you don't have to go out and buy the latest and greatest power guzzling monsters in order to enjoy your Linux. Um, if you're not a heavy gamer, if you don't play the very latest games at high resolutions, um, these these small low powered, often silent or very low noise systems you can literally fling behind your monitor and hide it out of the way um, are more than capable these days of, um, of most tasks that you would perform on a PC and of course I've said before but the power usage um, this particular uh, machine was locked in the BIOS they'd set it in the BIOS rather at 10 watts maximum draw and that's the recommended for the chipset you can remove that and unlock it as I said if you do that the graphics performance will increase quite substantially if you increase that to say 14 or 15 watts that cap you will get about another 10 fps on many games which makes the difference between playable and unplayable or enjoyable and ugh. so um you can consider that um if you take it up just two or three watts then all you're going to notice is a bit more fan noise if you start going 15 16 17 up to the 24 that it allows um thing is going to start running fairly hot and it will thermal throttle and I probably wouldn't recommend that but um, uh, something I might do with this and I'll perhaps I'll cover it in another video is to remove the plastic top cover and experiment with putting a large flat metal heat sink on there passive heat sink on there and we'll see how that copes maybe we can just open the thing up completely in terms of its power usage and um, we'll see what difference that makes uh, but um, in the meantime, these are lovely units. Um, I hope you found it useful and I will see you again in the next video. Bye for now.